welcome to the main farm. Today we have a jam packed day. We got done with harvest the other day. Cooper and Zach have been hard at work getting all the equipment cleaned up and winterized. So this morning, we're gonna get everything put away. And then if all goes well, we are going to get started on some projects that I have been wanting to work on for the last 15 years. Let's get to it. A little behind the ball, they're getting the sprayers and right now those have been winterized. So they're gonna be in cold storage. So they will be a-okay. Don't have to worry about pumps or anything freezing. Got all the semis in here. Check this out, they acidized the red Freightliner. I don't even recognize these wheels anymore. Look at that fuel tank. Oh my. One of the next things we're going to be working on is the planters. So we want to make sure we're not tucking this stuff in front of them because we're going to be whipping these things out of here. So we don't want to have to be doing the equipment puzzle Jenga Tetris. That's the word I'm looking for during the middle of the winter time. We are going to have to make some room in the heated shop for all these ones that have liquid inside of them. Those black ones have seed in them. That can stay in here. We want that cold. But these ones, we don't want to have them freeze. And we're selling two of our old hopper trailers for the semi, so we're gonna have a lot more room inside the big machine shed this year because now we don't have to store two trailers back here. We're trying to make it so the heated shop is not a storage facility, it's just a working on equipment facility. So everything outside here, we're trying to get over into the main farm inside the big machine shed and the buildings over there. And then as we're working on things, we'll pull them out from there. We'll bring them here. But right now, number one on the item list here, is the combine, so that's staying, but everything else is going over to the main heat, or not the main heated shop, the main farm. We still got the black truck, the lease is up on it, but we are waiting to find a new one to replace it with. We haven't found anything we quite like yet, so I guess we still have this one for now. Oh man, it's starting to look like a small car dealership around here. We're not gonna need to haul the fuel trailer to anything until springtime when we're planting. So I think what we're gonna try to do is just back it in right here in front of these tires. Then if we need to pull a piece of equipment in to fill it with diesel, we can still have access to it. It's still out of the way enough where it's not bothering us. I think that's the perfect fit. Oh, jacking the truck up. There we go. Going. We're going to put these tubes back on the grain vac so that way if we ever need it again we're not having to hunt these down inside of a different building because that seems to happen a lot. Mega tube. Our main goal here with the big machine shed is to get everything inside, but goal number two is we want to have nice, easy access for the cemetery trailer, because in the past, it seemed like we had to move stuff around or you had to kind of MacGyver it in there. And we just want a nice, straight, easy shot. So next up, I think we're gonna try to get the 340 tucked away. And no, looking at these LSW 1400s, never gets old. We've had these for three years now and you still just stare at them. They're huge. We're gonna try to keep this center lane wide open for the cemetery trailer. I think we can tuck the 340 there in front of the 24 row planter. Cooper is gonna try to fit the corn head right between the sprayer and the planter. Should have plenty of room there. And I don't know what's gonna go here. Tap, always turn your battery shut off off, which is not a true kill because listen, we can still hear the fuel pump and I just shut that off. Bring this to your house or the north shed? The Melvin. Work together on some hay stuff. So this is Zach's rake. It's bigger. It can get two windrows at one time that the baler makes. So this one works a lot better. We're over here at Melvin's farm right now. Melvin is Zach's grandpa. So we're gonna tuck it away inside the shed here. You're good. Well, we're over here. We're at Mechanic Scott's right now. He's got the big mass he all ready to go. I think he fixed the air conditioner. I don't know what else he did to it. But our 2745's over here too. So we're gonna bring these back, get them inside. Come on, yeah. Think about these 903 comments, it doesn't matter if it's 105 degrees out or five degrees out. It's gonna smoke just like that for about 30 minutes. Oh, make sure they get that one started. It's been a really 
really nice tractor for us. We've had it my whole life. It's got about 5,000 hours on it. It's just a nice medium duty, 100, I don't know, 140 horsepower tractor. When I was a little boy, we also had a 2775, which was the big brother to that one, which is about the size of our John Deere 4840. And it caught on fire on dad when he was putting a hydrus on. And then I guess that's when we got our 7140. I do really like the fact that in these four wheel drives, you have so much visibility. Just look at that. Sometimes we gotta get stuff in here to visualize a little bit. I think we're gonna try to take that 2745 and we're gonna try to tuck it in that gap right in front of the 340. We might have to move a couple of those totes in order to get it in there. Those are gonna be going into the heated shop anyway. It's not the end of the world. Ooh, this might be a good idea or it might be a bad idea, but we're gonna try to lift both of these at one time. I don't know how full that top one is, to be honest. Sounds like tomorrow they're talking 30 mile an hour winds. So it is going to be super breezy. We're not gonna be able to have these doors open because when the wind comes in that way, it blows all the way through and then it pushes on our doors on the back end. We do not want to blow them off the tracks. 30 mile an hour winds may be enough to do that. So we're gonna get everything done in here tonight, get everything inside. So that way, if we do get that wind in that direction, then we're not having to do anything in here. For whatever reason, something about these old Masseys, it seems like once they get a shot of starting fluid on it, it's just hooked on it. You, you literally cannot start this tractor without giving it a shot. We're gonna make sure we're in neutral here. See, watch. I've never had this tractor to be able to start without starting fluid, ever. It's kind of funny, this tractor is working literally better than it ever has as we're selling it. Scott did something with the starter. He put a new starter on it, but I don't know if there was something with the solenoid. The key was not responding at all. So the, the starter would do nothing when you hit the key. So we had to basically hot wire it right from the starter. And then there was a, one of these cylinders had a hydraulic hose that was leaking really bad on the back. So then you have a nice puddle of hydraulic oil. So that is now fixed. So now we have a drip free tractor that starts and he must have done something. Maybe that was one of the issues with the solenoid, but I did not have to use any starting fluid at all. Normally I just take a and it would go, but here, <laughs> I didn't have to use it. We're gonna keep this slot reserved for the combine. That way the grain auger can stick out and it's right along the edge of the semis versus being right in the middle of the building. Then if you pull something tall under it, like the semi, it could actually hit the auger. So we like to get that tucked onto the side of the building. Ryan, the combine mechanic, is supposed to come down and inspect that. Then we'll get a parts list put together on what needs to be replaced on the combine, you know, the wear items, if anything broke, that kind of thing. And then this winter, we'll be able to start working on that and getting that put back together for next harvest. I'm looking forward to getting the inside of my heated shop done because all those toolboxes will be able to come out of here and they're gonna go into there. And then once my porch gets done, we'll be able to get basically all these big pallets of stuff out of here. We're gonna have a lot more room in this front corner. This corner is kind of the standard of how we would like the building to look. Everything has a nice place. It's clean, it's crisp. There's nothing on the floor between things. So this corner has a nice role model just right across the other side of the shop. Is loud. There we go. That's what we were going for. We want nice clear room on the side of the cemetery trailer. Combine will end up going up there. Then we'll have plenty of room if we got something extra in here, which I'm sure we will find something to fill the space. And I guess if we really needed to, we could maybe put some small stuff over here. But I kind of like this open like this. It makes a lot of room for air without accidents happening. Multi-packer, it's wide, it's low, and that makes a really weird combination for literally every building we have. We can put it in a tall building that's wide, but then you're 
you know, wasting so much upper space. And then in the low buildings, they're not wide enough to fit it in. So we have one building over at Luke and Ashley's. So we're gonna bring it over there. And I'm bringing it with the skid loader instead of the truck because I'm more than likely going to need the skid loader to move another trailer that's in the way. I don't know, but I don't wanna go over there, find out I need it, then have to load it up and then it, this is gonna be faster, trust me. I was right, there was something in the way, but I don't think I can just pull their camper outside and leave it there and then put this inside to replace it. I wasn't being very efficient. Probably should have came over and looked with the truck first. Well, that was kind of a, a waste of 40 minutes. Well, we got to see some beautiful fields and go some areas we've never driven before in the skid loader. So we gained new experience, so it wasn't all a big waste. But we're just going to keep this outside for now, I guess, until we find an area where we can put it. But right here seems like a pretty good spot. Our little adventure didn't work out so good, but we made it back just in time. The Brian's here to pick up a load of corn. Oh, that overhead fills so fast. I love it. We'll fill a whole semi in about five minutes, which that's fast. We're shooting for about 80,000 pounds total load. So including the weight of the truck, the trailer, plus the grain, 80,000. So we'll fill the front about full, and then we'll fill this between these two bars right here about halfway. We'll fill that one full, we'll fill that one full. And that's about easy. That looks pretty good. An update on the burned out lights on the bin side or broken light or whatever. <laughs> Talk to Derek and Drew at Northwest Lighting Systems. We already got a new one here. That did not take very long. So the ones we have pointing at the Cornstar Farms sign on the bin, it's upside down. It's one of these, but a smaller one. And we kind of wonder if maybe when it was upside down, if one of the little seals or something leaked because it's not really designed to be upside down. So maybe it shorted out that light, which made this light short out. But regardless, Regardless, they stood behind it, the warranty here. So we're gonna put two that are supposed to be upside down here and then the big light is replaced. Every single one of the bright lights we have on the farm, including the ones above my head right now are from Northwest Lighting Systems. Awesome. And welcome to Daylight Savings. We'll see you in the morning. Ugh. So here's the plan of attack today. As we can see, we have nice bright blue skies. It's like 60 degrees out. I would really like to go between that wind turbine and that wind turbine and pull the fence that is connecting between them. That's the project that I've been wanting to work on for the last 15 years. And not just that fence, I wanna get all the fences out. It's, it's going to be a big project. But before we do that, the weatherman is talking of gusts this afternoon, like up to 30 miles an hour. It's gonna blow us all around. And so I want to get the jobs that need to be done well, it's calm done first, because when we're in the cab of the skid loader, it doesn't matter if it's windy. It's not gonna bother us. Here we are in everybody's favorite job, cleaning out the last of underneath the dryer and the conveyors, and then we're gonna hop under the boots, under the leg, and get all that nice rotten crap stuff cleaned out before the wind picks up, and then the bees' wings will blow in our eyes and give us bees' wing contacts, and Get them in your mouth and everywhere else. <laughs> Here we go! Oh, leaf blower! Oh, leaf blower! Perfect. Dad already got started a little bit. See all that crud that's kind of in the bottom? This is our dry leg, so it's what comes from the dryer. And then you get that nice hot corn that sits in the bottom of the boot. And that rots really quickly if you don't get some nice cool air blowing through. So this corn's no good, but we need to get all that cleaned out under there because we don't want that to sit. It'll make like a, I don't know what you'd call it, it's a liquid, but it, it's really corrosive and it'll actually rust out the bottom of these if you let it sit on there long enough. And if it's bad enough, this actually sits in there, then it freezes to the paddles inside of here and then you can't run the leg during the winter time, which that's not fun either. We're gonna start in the least fun part first, which is underneath the dryer. Ooh, and I thought dad had this cleaned up pretty much. I guess not. Oh well, we'll get it. This 
is why if we can get in here when it's dry with the leaf blower, it's so much better. Like right now, you got all these tiny little areas. And you gotta come in here with a crowbar and they're all stuck together. It just takes a lot longer than it needs to. Hey, hey, there we go. Ron's back for another load. There goes another load. We do all of our grain marketing on the Board of Trade and we utilize options. So we utilize puts and we utilize calls. If you're not familiar with what that is, that's okay. It's basically, it gives us a floor and it gives us a ceiling and that helps lessen the risk of us marketing our grain. So we don't have any true cash positions until we actually pull the trigger and make a sale. And we make those sales based on what the individual buyers across the state are willing to pay versus the Board of Trade. So they call the difference between what the Board of Trade is offering for the price. So when you see the price of corn in the newspaper or on television, that is the Chicago Board of Trade price. Then you have the price that the actual buyers are willing to pay. So that difference between the Chicago Board of Trade price and what the actual buyers are paying is what's called the basis. So right now, one of the buyers, the little buyers, must really need some grain because they are at a positive basis, so they are actually offering more than what the Chicago Board of Trade price is. So that's when we actually actuate our sales, when we have a good basis price. So when it gets in a positive basis, we start rubbing our hands together and we say, okay, we're ready to start making some grain sales. So that is what we did. We actually just rolled out 20,000 bushels of corn and so we're getting started hauling early here while the weather's nice, which I'm not complaining. The wind has not picked up yet, but we ended up getting done over there at the men's side, or at least everything cleaned up, and we need to clean this out, speaking of that. But I have a load of some wire right now on the dump truck. Cooper has been out in the field pulling wire already, and there are a lot of wooden posts in there, and the scrapyard will not take the wooden posts unless you burn them out. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna load everything up in the dump truck in nice bundles. We're gonna go throw it on a ginormous tree pile. Then so when we burn the pile, it'll burn the posts out. And then we'll be able to bring the wire to the scrapyard. Oh my goodness, that looks so much different already. Whoa, there's wire right there. The throwing the balls of wire with the wood on the burn pile is a much more effective method. It's way more time efficient. It's about 10 times faster then pulling all the staples out of each individual wooden pole because there's like four of them and then the bottom one is usually about that far under soil and it's just a bear cat to get out so this way just pull everything up roll it up burn it simple we can use equipment this is 2023 can't be using our hands Oh, this looks weird without a fence. Weird but good. I like it. Not a lot of wooden posts in that guy. A couple. I did get a hold of Michael at the scrapyard and I asked him what he thought of us bringing them in like that. And he said he'd prefer them to be burned out. And I asked, well, what if I did bring them in like this? Would you take them? And he said, ah, honestly, probably not. So in this case, I asked for permission and I didn't get it. We're gonna be bringing this over to Kristen and Rusty's right on the other side of that silo. Or more specifically, right next to this old hog building foundation where I have this big old pile of trees. Sayonara wire. Load number one. My goodness, that is a post that was not going anywhere. It's got concrete on it, so is that one. Nowadays, we have a lot of fields that are 160 acres or 80 acres, 40 acres. But you go back a hundred years ago, there was a lot of like five acre pieces where, you know, they had a 40, but then they fenced it into like eight different little five acre spots. So I'm pretty sure this was a gate going in where you could get to different parts of a section. The corner posts and gate posts are always your strongest ones. Try not, well, I should probably put it in park here. Ooh. Not park, but in gear. Farming's a lot different landscape than it was back then though, because 100 years ago, a family could easily survive off 160 acres. Like that, you were a big time farmer if you were farming 160 acres. And then you had like your livestock and everything else. Now, like I would say the equivalent of a 160 acre farmer is probably like a, like a 1600 acre farmer. Load number two. 
Think of Grandpa's farm as a big square. We got the left side of the square right underneath the wind turbines. That is done. The back side of the square, that's been done for a long time. Now we just have the right side of the square to pull fence on. We got about three quarters of a mile or so to pull fence over here, but we're not going to do that right now because we're gonna head right on the rise and right under those silos over to Kristen and Rusty's. And we have three quarters of a mile fence that we need to pull over there because we have the bulldozer coming. This is what we're gonna be using as a fence pulling setup. I got the forks on the front. We're using the forks to roll everything up into a ball. And then this is Zach's tree puller and it everything hooks together here at the front so you can use it as a stump bucket. But then we can also grab fence posts with this. This works a lot better for taking out whole fences because you pull them by the posts and then you lay everything over versus coming in with the forks and scooping under the wire, then picking up because then the wire sometimes gets stripped off the poles and then you have a lot more broken strings and stuff. So so we've kind of figured out this method, or Cooper has, and it works really well. You do need hydraulics on your skid loader in order to do it. I think these are regular flow on the grapple. I've never ran this tree puller before, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. And this fence is shot. We don't have animals out here anymore. Neither does the neighbor. So really no point in this thing being in here. It's honestly falling over. And I think it's a double fence. So when the one fence went bad, they just decided to build another one right beside it. So we're pulling technically two fences in one. See, we got a fence up in the air. We have fence still in the ground, two fences. Oh yeah, that top wire is always thick. It's starting to rain, it's windy, it's dark. I'm tired. I don't know, let's go home. We got an hour block before we go spend, well, we already spent a little time with Edward. We read him a book and then we're gonna come out here for an hour. That's what we're limiting ourselves to. Then we'll go back in, get some supper. We got upper body tonight. We're gonna be doing some bench press. We're gonna be doing some rows. We're gonna be doing overhead press. And we're gonna be doing pull-ups. And we're working out in the cold tonight because the heater that used to be in here was that thing. And when we ended up tending the inside of the shop, we took it out of the corner. So we got the gas plug in right there. We gotta get that hooked up to the tube heater that's up top. And we also gotta get the tube heater vented out on the outside of the building yet. That might be a project later this week that we need to get to before it starts to freeze because we have some stuff we wanna put in here that we don't want to freeze. After I warm up good, I like to start my first set, which should be my heaviest set. And then as we fatigue, then we'll drop weight down as sets go. But while we're the freshest, we're gonna try the most. This is 185 pounds. We're gonna try it for 12. <sighs> Hold on a second. I had that 25 on there. This is a 25, this is a 10, this is a 15. So that's 25 pounds, that's 25, that's 50 pounds. We had the same thing on the other side, that's 100 pounds. The bar is 45, that's 145. We had 195 on there. Whoa. Just got done benching. That's what we did for everything. Just four sets of 12. Last set I got to eight and I dropped weight 10 pounds. I did four more immediately after. That's what we did for all of our sets of rows. It's definitely a PR, the heaviest we've ever done. Yeah, three more sets. Here we go, all pumped up. Tonight for supper, David made some chicken noodle soup for me, and Edward's over there chilling out with his milk. We got bowl number two. This time we incorporated some mashed potatoes in there. And then we're eating it. <laughs> yes, and Edward is eating it. <laughs> Why do you hold your bottle upside down? All right, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.